Hello everyone. Welcome back to Bootstrap Workbench. Today I wanted to talk about uh, installing and configuring WSJTX to work with your ICOM IC7300. The first thing that you'll want to know is uh, once you have your ICOM7300 connected to your computer you'll want to know which COM port it's using. Uh, in my case my Silicon Labs CP 210X USB to UART bridge is on COM3. Uh, it may vary depending on the configuration of your system. In fact, it probably will. Uh, and if this is not showing up, then you can always um, download and install the ICOM USB driver. I have a video that covers how to do that, and I'll put a link to that down below. So I'll go ahead and close Device Manager. Uh, I've already downloaded the uh, WSJTX uh, software, so I'll go ahead and uh, run that if you get your user account the sorry if you get the user account control prompt you'll want to go ahead and click yes on that and then click next and next again I went ahead and told it to uh, add WSJTX to the system path for all users and to uh, create a desktop icon next again and then install and uh, this will take just a couple of moments to uh, install and it should ask if we want to run it once it's done we'll click next here and run WSJTX it is uh, checked so we'll click finish alright and we are already receiving a signal here I've been into this software previously and configured it uh, I'll uh, tell it to stop monitoring and we'll go to our uh, file menu and then settings uh, under general put in your call and your grid for radio uh, drop down the box and select the ICOM IC7300 uh, for cat control put in the COM port that your uh, CP210 uh, Silicon Labs COM port is on in my case COM3 and for serial port parameters, uh, select 9600, data bits is 8, stop bits is 1, handshake is none, uh, don't force either of the control lines to high or low. Uh, for PTT method, I set cat. For mode, uh, you can have it um, use data packet for the most part, uh, or uh, upper sideband, or none. Uh, usually on the ICOM 7300, uh, data packet will get it working correctly. Uh, split operation in this case I'm setting to none. You can click on test cat and in my case it's working. Now I've gone into the rig and configured the settings. Uh, I've taken some screenshots and I'll go ahead and put those into the video so that you can see how I have my settings configured. Uh, the main things to be aware of uh, turn your AGC off, uh, set notch to off, noise blanker to off, noise reduction to off, and then under your set menu, under the connectors menu, go into CI5 and you will set your CIV baud rate to 9600. Your CIV address should be 94H. Uh, CIV train sieve in my case is set to on, but it doesn't matter uh, whether that's on or off. Alright, and then uh, if you scroll down a page, your CI5 uh, USB baud rate should be set to 9600. So keep in mind, if you're using RSBA1 with the waterfall, uh, you're going to have to change the setting before you use uh, WSJTX, and you'll have to change it back. The waterfall only works with uh, 115-200. And then the other important setting is to set your CI5 USB, USB port uh, link to remote. Uh, make sure that's engaged. Uh, those are the critical settings that will determine uh, whether or not you'll pass the test cat and then also uh, your data mode is just not going to work very well if you don't have the AGC notch, noise blanker, and noise reducer all set correctly.
So, uh, the next setting that you'll set, you'll go to your audio tab, make sure that your input and output are both set to USB audio codec uh, respectively, uh, microphone for input, speakers for output. And then, if you wanted to take a look at what frequencies um, the different modes select, they're listed here. And there's quite a few of them. So I'll click OK here, and then I'll turn monitor back on. And I don't know if you can hear it through the computer, but I can hear it through the radio speaker. I am receiving a digital signal right now. So once we finish uh, full decode on this, we should get some data that pops up under the band activity window. One thing to be aware of, uh, the slider here uh, next to your receive signal strength, I would adjust it down until you're receiving uh, about a 50 decibel signal. Uh, that's where it seems to receive the best. And uh, once you've done that, then you should start seeing uh, information populate here on the left side. Uh, as the data comes in, it does take uh, a little bit of time to receive the data since the baud rate is uh, fairly low. Uh, today I'm only going to cover receiving uh, the different modes. Uh, in fact, uh, I think I'm receiving JT65 right now. Uh, in fact, yes I am. Uh, there are other modes. The setup is, the setup is similar. You just need to be on the right frequencies. Uh, once we get into transmitting, we'll talk uh, some more about that, but I'm going to save that for another video. Uh, I'm just waiting to see. There we go. Now we have some information populating here under the band activity window. And uh, when you see a CQ pop up, the uh, software will highlight it in green. So that's pretty much going to cover uh, installing and configuring uh, WSJTX to work with the ICOM. IC7300, uh, just a short video to uh, show you how to set it up to get it working, and then we can delve further into the topic in future videos. I'm trying to keep the videos shorter since uh, YouTube tells me that uh, most people view videos for about three minutes, so I, I like to keep them uh, in manageable chunks. So I hope you found this video informative. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them down below, and uh, I hope you have a great evening. Thanks for watching.